Good morning, everyone present here. I'm Dr. Jay Amadija, Professor, School of Computing, Mohan Babu University, Kilpati. I feel privileged to welcome you all on behalf of Mohan Babu University to the International Conference on Intelligent Healthcare and Computational Neural Modeling, ICIHCNN 2022, organized by the University. In association with Sula India University, the University of Kilpatrick, I feel privileged to welcome you all on behalf of Bhumba. Bhumba University is a goal-driven university of next generation. The ultimate objective of Bhumba University is to provide the forward-thinking facilities to the students and get them prepared to face any professional challenge in future in both public as well as in any private sectors in Indian arena and also abroad. Our academic excellence promises us to bring out the aspiring leadership qualities from the students. With this note, I now request Dr. K. Reddy Marvi, Professor, School of Computing, Mohan Babu University, and convener for this conference, to deliver the welcome address. Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Manchu Mohan Babu, Pro Chancellor, Vishnu Manchu Baru, Vice Chancellor, Professor Navaraj Ramara Baru, the Dr. K. Sarati Baru, today's speaker, Dr. Sarati Baru, and 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 Dr. And Dean Research and Innovation, Dr. Ramirani Srinivasan Garu, Dean School of Engineering, Dr. Priyam Satish Garu, Associate Vice President, Industry and Information Relations, Dr. Ashok Khedu, and respected deans, head of the departments, professors, faculty members, delegates, supporting staff, and my dear students. On behalf of ICFHCNN 2022 our team, I'm pleased to welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of International Conference on Intelligent Healthcare and Computational Neural Modeling, ICIHCNA 2022, at the Nash Bay School of Computing, Mohan Babu University, in association with Asia University, Taiwan. ICIHCNA 2022 aims to bring together the world's best academic scientists, researchers, and scholars in order to exchange and share their experiences and findings, focusing on how the mind represents and manipulates knowledge and how Healthcare market is becoming more consumer driven. As this age, untreatment information becomes more accessible, and as digital increasingly fuses expectations across industries. The field of cognitive neuroscience is highly transdisciplinary in nature, which combines ideas, principles, and methods of psychology, computer science, artificial intelligence machine learning, linguistics, philosophy, neuroscience, etc. All engineering researchers, practitioners, and educators will get an opportunity to share their latest findings, trends, and concerns, as well as the practical issues they have encountered and solutions they have adopted. The goal of this international conference is to bring together the academics and industry professionals to discuss the most recent advancements in the related field. Original contributions from researchers describing their unpublished research work pertaining to cognitive science, computational intelligence, IoT, and applications of machine learning techniques to address the real world problems, interdisciplinary research involving machine learning, experimental and theoretical studies yielding new sites into the design of expert systems, and manuscripts describing the development of new analytical frameworks that advance the practical machine learning methods are especially encouraged methods. And the contributions of multidisciplinary research presented to Springer Nature, enabling the interdisciplinary handshake and promotion of collaborative research. We appreciate the hard work uh, done by the various authors from various countries and who work 
fabulously towards this research and development. This is the room for reaching out the professionals, practitioners, technologists, innovators, and the representatives of all other nations. With this, I welcome you all to this inaugural ceremony. Thank you, Dr. Redimarvi, for your welcome vote. It's time to invite the grazing guests onto the dais. Where Dean William or Inge, English author, once said, the aim of education is the knowledge, not of fact, but of values. It's on occasions like this, we get opportunities to test our knowledge and understanding. And we look forward to get an exposure. With this brief note, I extend a warm welcome to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Mohan Babu University, Professor Nagraj Ramrao Garu, onto the dais. Please, sir. I'm assuming to see it, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Albert Einstein once said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. With this brief note, I extend a warm welcome to our registrar, Mohan Babu University, Dr. K. Saradi Garu, onto the desk, please, sir. Well, Swami Vivekananda once said, education is the manifestation of perfection present already in man. Divinity is the manifestation of the religion already in man. With this brief note, I extend a warm welcome to the Dean Research and Innovation, Mohan Babu University, Dr. Ravi Reddy Srinivasan Garu, onto the desk, please. Well, Dr. Sarvepalli Radhakrishnan once said, the end product of education should be a free creative man who can battle against historical circumstances and adversity of nature. With this brief note, I extend a warm welcome to Associate Vice President, Industry and International Relations, Dr. Ashok Herodgaru onto the desk, please sir. Well, Rabindranath Tagore once said, the highest education is that which does not merely give us information, but makes our life in harmony with all existence. With this brief note, I extend a warm welcome to the Dean School of Engineering, Mohan Babu University, Dr. B.M. Satish Karu, to the desk, please. Thank you all. We are truly delighted with your presence today. It's the time now to start the proceedings of our program by lighting the lamp. I would like to invite the dignitaries, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Dean Research and Innovation, Associate Vice President, Industry and Institutional Relations, Dean School of Engineering, HOD CSC, and convener of the conference for the lamp lighting okay. ceremony. Thank you. 
Thank you all. Prayer works one. Prayer spring from the heart. Thinking of a supreme power beyond all human inadequacies is a kind of auto solution. In this note, I request Sneha and Chakri Priya, second year BTEC CSE data science, to offer prayers. On the PhD scholars, we are joined online. We are joined online. We didn't welcome Sai, really welcome the all. We need to welcome him also. He's online. Yes, he is. Welcome to him. Thank you, Snega and Chakrasita. Now, we will start the conference with the inaugural address by uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Mohan Babu University. I would like to request our Honorable Vice Chancellor to address the delegates. So, please. Good morning, all of you. Place my humble reverences to our uh, Lord Chancellor, Dr. Mohan Babu Garu, our Co Chancellor, Mr. Mentor Vishnu Garu, the Registrar. Sadi, Dean School of Engineering, Dr. Satish, Dean Research and Innovation, Dr. Srinivasalu, my dear friend, uh, Mr. Heru, uh, Associate Vice President, Industry Relations, Head of the Department of Computer Science Engineering, various faculty, senior faculty from the School of Computing, and my dear students. A warm morning to all of you. It's indeed a great pleasure and honor to me and to be amongst all of you today morning to be part of a very niche conference. The title is very niche because it's not very generic. It says International Conference on Intelligent Healthcare and Computational Neuromodeling. It is, it is very, very niche area of, uh, in the area of computer science, in the area of machine learning, artificial intelligence, neural networks. You talk about any latest thing that is going to happen in the area of interdisciplinary engineering. It has uh, uh, what to say, taste of everything in this conference. I should uh, congratulate the uh, coordinators and the organizers for selecting this theme because very few people are brave enough to select such a theme for the conference. Normally, whenever we talk about conferences, we select the themes to be very generic in nature <clears throat> so that you get as many papers as possible for the conference. The intention of any conference is getting as many papers as possible and then publishing hundreds of papers uh, at the end of each conference. But I should uh, congratulate the team, School of Computing, who thought about uh, such a niche for this conference because it is very rare, very difficult to get 
researchers working in the various domains that has been specified in this conference. And I understand there are about 50 papers. Oh, total papers received 187, of which how many are going into Springer? 55 selected and going into the Springer General, which is a uh, Now, uh, commentable. So, and, and out of the, Madhavi uh, Madam is giving me a brief, telling me that out of the 87 papers, uh, that has been published in the Springer Nature General uh, Journal, uh, 12 are the international conference. I also thank uh, my fellow colleague from Peru, uh, who is the keynote speaker, Dr. Ciro Rodriguez, who has joined us online here, because he works in that area and we have been working together on some of the important projects that we were doing. And uh, he is uh, also joined online, sir. On behalf of all my colleagues present at Mohan Babu University, I extend a very warm welcome to you. I know you are online. Maybe you are able to hear us and see us also. Uh, so thank you very much for taking time because it is 12 hours gap from uh, Indian time to Peru time. He is sitting in a time zone. Now it is about 10.30 here. It is 10.30 night there. So you just understand the uh importance and uh, the encouragement he wants to give to all young researchers who are uh, assembled in this uh, small hall uh, i thought the hall should have been full because school of computing has a large number of students uh, the undergrad students and also the uh, phd students uh, they should have all attended physically uh, probably uh, the organizers should take more care in future to make the physical participation of uh, the various uh, PhD scholars who have registered in the School of Computing uh, in all the future programs. So Dr. Narendra Kumar, Dean School of Engineering, Avery Shrinivasulu, uh, and uh, people like Dr. Madhavi must ensure physical participation because it's always a bigger difference, a great impact whenever people uh, participate physically in these conferences. I understand there shall be a uh, lot of deliberations happening in the two-day conference today and tomorrow. You have a very key, uh, very important keynote address from Sidor Rodriguez, and there will be many more people similar to his profile talking to you during the conference. And all of you, my dear friends, students, uh, you be uh, belong to a uh, you know a stream of engineering. Though we call it as computer science engineering, and anybody says computer science, we always say it is software, it is IT. You go sit and do some coding. No, very very importantly, you are the you know the most interdisciplinary workforce which any country is going to create because you are not only you should be doing something with the hardcore electronics. You do something with uh, you do with healthcare. You go and do something with space. You do something with uh, you you talk the uh, you talk about the various uh, nuances of engineering and science. Without computer science, without uh, people who know what computing is, uh, life becomes very, very difficult. And that is what is the title of this conference. So, uh, most glaring example of what a computer science engineer can do is what India has done uh, in the last two years or three years back when we uh, invented vaccine for ourselves. We not only invented vaccine for ourselves, but also we gave vaccines to the world. All this happened because we had the, the computational power, the computational knowledge, high performance computing, parallel programming. These were all the various technologies that were used in you know, researching on getting a vaccine at a very, very short duration of time. It was a major, major challenge because pandemic broke out uh, maybe in end of 19, early 20, we had a vaccine early uh, 21. So within a span of a year, we were able to uh, develop a vaccine, not only for ourselves, but also we gave it to the world and India became the pharmacy of the world. So all this was possible because of, uh, you know, graduates, engineers who know what high performance computing is, who know what uh, uh, analyzing large data sets mean, so these are all the various things that we look forward from you and these conferences will give you experience uh, in understanding uh, the you know, intricacies of what is the various ways in which the research is progressing in uh, 
and the various you know branches of the very large umbrella called as computer science and so take at most uh, advantage of such conferences it is not only conferences held at mohan babu university but also maybe several such conferences workshops seminars there are various youtube things that is going to happen online is you know has taken a major major uh, lead because of the covid uh, earlier we never used to look into what online systems are but now we we got used to what online online is there are several such conferences workshops happening online so your teachers must guide you and tell you where such things are happening so that you develop babu you are very tired you copy wala in good yarn from the time you are sitting here you should have some basic manners first remove the cap so the your teachers and guides must tell you where such conferences do happen where such uh, knowledge uh, sharing is happening and guide you because the acumen for lifelong learning acumen for understanding what is the latest which is happening will come only from attending these conferences and also we at mohan babu university all of you know my dear friends give a lot of encouragement for you to publish we are one such university one such uh, uh educational institutions shri vidyaniketan educational institutions we support and guide uh, students in undergrad in the uh, bachelor's program also to publish in various conferences and journals i understand there may be some papers from the student in this conference there may be some papers maybe your teachers would have work with you in maybe getting some small coding done by you so all that is possible so please take at most advantage of the next two days and i thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this program i would not take much time because i speak then there may be more such guys who would yawn further stop that and then probably uh, leave you between the actual keynote speakers and and the actual deliberations of the conference wish you all the very best let the lord almighty sprinkle the best of his wishes in each one of you may all your dreams come true and maybe you take your parents dreams forward thank you very much thank you very much sir for your thought provoking speech now i would like to request our registrar mohan babu university to address the delegate sir please i will call chancellor the mohan babu well for chancellor is to that and vice chancellor sridhar ramrawat and the great cbs and the chair of them and my fellow colleagues in ri university well team full of engineering and uh, dr satish well and associate in the civil relations ashok kumar garu my dear students and my dear colleagues a warm welcome for this conference and we want you to work off the delegates it is indeed a privilege for me to be part of this wonderful conference with the most on temporary pain with the change in the lifestyles increase in pollution and climate change the health of the mankind is at its ebb it is very much inevitable now for every one of us keep health and health care as an important reach as a done there is a lot of oh and promising results are there now in this field with the blend of medicine pharmaceutical sciences and artificial intelligence the solid example as charles of white charles sir says is the discovery of the vaccine and its large scale production for covid 19 the new computational technologies have added the scientists to come out 
with such solution in a shorter span of time. I'm very excited to see these developments. I'm confident that this conference will ignite each one of this one of the participants to contribute to research as well as bringing this advancement to the classrooms of the classrooms for the student advanced learning. I wish all of you a happy and fruitful stay during this conference and thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to participate in this one and thank you, thank you one another. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable insights. I feel privileged to introduce our chief guest and keynote speaker for the day, Professor Dr. Ciro Rodriguez, to our esteemed audience. Professor Dr. Ciro Rodriguez is a full professor in the Department of Software Engineering at the National University Mayor D. San Marcos, Republic of Peru, the more ancient university of South America, founder in 1551, and with the Department of Informatics and Electronic Engineering at the National University Federico Villarreal. He has completed his PhD in engineering and has advanced studies at the Institute of Theoretical Physics, ICTP of Italy. At the United States Particle Accelerator School, USPAS, and in Information Technology Development Policy Studies, Korea, Korea Telecom KT in South Korea. His research interests include multidisciplinary research related to artificial intelligence, health, social welfare, environment, photonics, mechanics, and cybersecurity. He is an international speaker at different conferences and also chair, has published many books and over 130 research articles in reputed journals in that in Scopus, Web of Science, and he's a senior member of IEEE and filed three patents in engineering fields. He's also the winner of 2022 Scientific Merit Award for engineering at UNMSF. Thank you, sir, for accepting our request to grace the occasion as chief guest and to deliver the keynote address for the conference. Now, I would like to request Professor Dr. Ciro Rodriguez to address the audience. Please, sir. Good morning. Can you hear me, please? Good yes. morning. Yes, good morning. Yes. For me, it's a, a midnight also. Uh, we are far away, but uh, I am happy to stay here sharing with you this special uh, conference. Uh, I'm happy to see yellow and red colors that light up this morning for you and this night for me. Uh, please, uh, I'm very happy. It's an, an honor for me to stay here to share uh, some insights about what is the technology and how important it is for students and researchers. Thank you. Uh, and please, if, you, if uh, the organizers let me to show my, my the permission to show my my presentation, please. Yes, sir. We have made you the conference, sir. You can share your presentation. Okay. Uh, I will start. I will show you. Please. Uh, Is it can be seeing my presentation? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, uh, uh, again, thank you very much, <laughs> Professor uh, Agaresha Ramarao. I am happy to uh, stay here for your invitation, and also Professor Reddy that I was keeping keeping in touch with uh, for organizing this uh, 
conference. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to stay here and share uh, some same ideas that we have. Now, maybe we have the same problems. I hear about pollution. We have uh, problems of traffic. We have uh, healthy problems. We have also a problems with all, all, all people that is getting and needs also attention, okay? And also young people, um, many, many problems that we have actually that uh, we, can, we need to solve it. And so it, it will be very important that we can uh, collaborate uh, the solution of these problems and also give to our students, our researchers, the opportunity to share knowledge and uh, learn also another language and be prepared to the hard work that is coming. Uh, the timing goes by very, very, very fast. And so we need to take advantage of all of these situations. Okay. Well, uh, I will start uh, my, my, my speech. Uh, I will do uh, uh, speak about how neural networks are important in, in our lives, in how to develop all the technology and solving also the problems of, uh, and applications to the health and medicine. Um, this uh, uh, presentation, we, we will uh, talk about uh, how the origin of, of, of neural networks until nowadays, how is uh, the technology going on, okay? So uh, one of the first things that, that uh, we, we can understand is that uh, the origin of all the, these artificial neural networks and the history in, in 1940 was the, the first electronic computer decade. Well, and the first uh, neural model that also was uh, successful uh, used in neural computer was uh, the, the yes. Rosenblatt yes. in 1957. Okay. Uh, we can uh, see now how the organization of the Persetron uh, was a, a very, uh, very simple, okay? Uh, it has the same structure that now we can go to, to, to working. Uh, uh, we have to, uh, in, in the left side uh, to Fran Rosenberg uh, with Charles Whitman working in a part of the unit of becoming of the first perceptron. Uh, this is one thing that we 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 need to to do again with a, with a joint work with uh, researchers from India and from from all the world and also from Peru that we can share. On the other side, we have the research uh, paper, okay, uh, where uh, they is talking about the design of an intelligent automation. So. Uh, uh, this also is very important, uh, what you are doing with this uh, conference, uh, generating uh, knowledge and research, uh, inviting to, to young people and senior people also, helping to these young students to, to have an, a new knowledge and present uh, some new ideas uh, with novelty, with contribution, and highlighting all, all the, the, the good that these uh, uh, techniques can do for us in this uh, scenario stage. So the evolution of the neural networks in the history is uh, going the, uh, through the electronic brain to perceptron at the line, uh, XOR, uh, multiple layer uh, support vector machine and deep neural ne networks, okay? And um, uh, in 1960, a uh, multi layer uh, uh, perceptron was very bad. And where was introduced always uh, the, the back propagation algorithm 
and Rummelhart and McLellan introducing the general uh, backpropagation algorithm also. And Hotfield also brought his idea of neural networks, okay, and a new version of the Hotfield net networks have been developed for Boltzmann machine who has influenced uh, also the, both the, the, the Hotfield network and uh, MLP. So Brunhead in, in 1988 introduced also the, the radial basis foundation, okay? And in 1982, Gohonen introduced a kind of, of network model that um, the self-organization, okay? And this originated of the learning vector quantization, uh, LVQ in 1972. Uh, since then, uh, Research and uh, artificial neural networks has remained active. So leading to many new networks and types of well hybrid algorithms uh, has uh, um, hardware and um, processing information. Uh, Geoffrey Avery's Hinton is uh, really amazing. Uh, uh, in 1998, he was elected a fellow for the Royal Society. And 2001, he was the first winner of the Romel Hart Prize for his contribution to the theoretical foundations of human cognition. So in 2018, he won the prestigious Turing Award for the work on deep learning, okay? And so sometimes uh, is referred to the godfather of artificial intelligence, uh, also godfather of the deep learning and have continued to give uh, a public talks uh, uh, together. Uh, so uh, it's important to recognize the, the, the words of, of Hinton, um, also uh, to follow the way that he's, the, this path that he left to us to continue working in, and developing uh, new technology, okay? And helping to others and also the, uh, to, with the contribution to knowledge and also the society. Uh, what is happening in the world actually? Okay, we are living in a um, uh, data growth uh, where are um, large volumes of data where are developed by researchers um, with the big data algorithms and systems like a um, Brown, Brownian motion, okay? Every time the volume of the data is um, also not controlled. Due the high the speed of which it is generated and uh, we maybe are able to process it. So uh, we have data everywhere where we go. And that's what engineers, we need, we need data data to process, to produce, to generate information, data to generate knowledge. So uh, we, this is uh, the best moment where we, have, where we can do many of these efforts to do, produce, okay, this new knowledge. Uh, maybe this is a recipe that uh, is well known for us, okay? But I was thinking, what do we do with this? Maybe we go to the doctor, doctor uh, give us a recipe, and when we finish it, we threw to the garbage this uh, recipe. But uh, why do we don't think that here is a data? Many data value data. The data that can help us to help to each people to generate a new way to take care of the health, for example. Okay, what is happening with this through the time? Maybe uh, data is uh, is belong to the to the to the person, but data also is uh, stored in a hospital and clinics, but. Uh, I am the owner of this data. This data is for me. And what I can do with this? 
why uh, we don't pay attention with its data and the time. So uh, there is a large uh, amount of that uh, of data sets actually, okay? We can find data sets of different, okay? Uh, skills uh, that are recommended by experts. We have data sets about uh, um, computer vision, about uh, how uh, uh, are the medical image analysis. We have multimodal database in vivo microscopy, embryonic, neonatal. We have a lot of image data archive. And so we have also radiology, ultrasound, mammographs, and X-ray, and CT, and MRI, okay? And so we have also collaborative informatics and neuroimaging suite. Also, we have uh, the cancer imaging archive. We have a Zamer disease neurology, okay? So data is here, is available, what we are doing, okay? So we can continue find data, 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 and data. So the question is, what we'll do? What we will do with this, okay? The thing is easy. We have it, we need to identify a problem, search for a solution. And we need to prepare the data, okay? The numbers, the uh, observations, the facts. And also, we have free programming language. Yeah, we need, just we need to download, to take the time to download. And so we have problem, we have data, we have language. So, what else we need? We need algorithms, we need models. So here is, there are the neural networks that can help us to the solution of many problems. So uh, also we have the, the, the basis of the science, we have math, physics, chemistry, biology. And so we have also computer science, we have also artificial intelligence, we have also machine learning, we have also deep learning, we have also okay, neural networks everywhere. And so we have many kinds of types of neural networks. Since the, the basic person thrown to free folk, to feed forward to radial basis network, to deep feed forward, to recurring neural networks, to long short term memory. Okay, we have autoencoder, uh, variational, uh, denoising, sparse networks. We have neur uh, neural networks, uh, the Markov chain, we have a whole field network, the Boltzmann, the restricted. Uh, we have a deep convolutional network. We have the convolutional network. We have deep convolutional inverse graphics. So we have all the tools. We have everything now. Yes, we need to create and generate new knowledge. If we can work together, we can do efforts to combine this neural networks, these different architectures, okay, and we can generate more stronger and fast accurate okay, results. So uh, we can use these uh, uh, all neural networks in health applications, okay, uh, diagnosing, detecting, predicting, performing differential diagnosis or extracting symptoms or proposing a new, new model, a new way to solve the problems. So uh, how we can applicate 
this, uh, we can use this uh, neural networks, okay? We can use it uh, to facial emotion recognition basing uh, on deep learning on, with transfer learning approach, okay? We can uh, use a smart uh, healthcare system to understand the behavior of the community of a person, okay? A happy person can work, can produce, can do happy to everyone who is close to them. So this is important to the health of the community, okay? So uh, the complication could be the variation of images, such so as different poses, lighting, accurate and robust, uh, uh, facial emotion recognition that can be remains a challenge using the computer models, but uh, with an, an approach that uh, classifies the, these facial uh, expressions based on deep transfer uh, learning. So the approach is uh, construct construct with this uh, convolution and neural networks and BGG nineteen. And so train the model to employ in, in a contemporary uh, deep learning techniques, such as um, getting an optimal learning rate finder, okay? On, on both, it can be also combined with uh, extended uh, cone K8, okay? And the Japanese female face expression, okay? Now, uh, the other uh, problem that we have is the, the database, okay? The data sets, we have many data sets, but we need to create more data sets. But maybe the data sets are not enough. So new techniques, the data augmentation are uh, developed to help to increase the amount of, of data um, so uh, there is uh, a way to, to generate more information. So uh, we can also uh, use a computational neural networks to the segmentation of multi-level or classification of diabetic food users basing on max uh, R, C, and N. Okay, we can combine many techniques that help to, to help to others, okay, to solve a problem that diabetic food user. Uh, this uh, diabetic food user has a high disability and mortality rate. So in, in locations where are poor people the world, there is no uh, a doctor, okay? There is no physician to, that can help them. Uh, we can, come with technology, maybe uh, help them, uh, people. Uh, so uh, an advanced and effective model for this automatic nest segmentation and with uh, multi-level classification of this diabetic uh, food user wounds so uh, we can use also the colors based on the deep learning assist doctor in diagnosing and treating, okay? So we have the left difference uh, kind of words in, in the diabetic food user. So uh, we can do also a multi-classification model to mark uh, the, the ones. And so uh, in five grades, according to the Wagner diabetic food creating method. So in the, the figure in, in, the, in the, the right side in the down, uh, we can see the results of these uh, diabetic uh, food users with the classification and segmentation by using the uh, DFSO, the segmentation and classification. Okay, so, uh, the, the, 
there, there was used a, a, a data set with uh, 1,000 images for uh, the diabetic food users and what's indoor samples. So uh, deep learning model of these uh, diabetic food users uh, was uh, used in a semantic segmentation basing on the improved mask, RC, and convolutional neural network. So uh, diabetic uh, images were the input to this improved uh, mask okay, model. Uh, then it could you be used the uh, diabetic view user for segmentation, okay, um, get different levels of diabetes. Another use of these uh, uh, neural networks could be the en ensembling data augmentation for uh, brain tumors detecting or using these uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, the diagnosis also, also is a, a big problem, okay? To detect, for example, a brain tumor is vital for a, for a treatment. So uh, magnetic uh, resonance imaging, okay, MRI, is one of the, the most common methods. But uh, also is needed uh, data augmentation methods such uh, using some characteristics uh, like rotation, translation, reflection, shear, bright, contrast, and blur, and scale, okay, to use, to have different uh, views of the images. So uh, we can also take some representative features for brain, okay, in this uh, magnetic res resonance uh, imagine with the layers, okay, that we can scan images uh, when they were extracted and we can have the, the layers fully connected for the architecture. So the classification and testing using this uh, support vector machine, okay, this method also can help to the experiment work with the inception uh, ResNet V2. So the, the performance is uh, tested that experiment was a model was observed that has a, a successful, okay, uh, compared with the state of the art of other methods is uh, very, uh, have a good accuracy and precision. So also in the medical uh, services, we, we need also protect information. Okay, uh, actually security is very important. We use, uh, uh, we pay the bank with, with internet. We show uh, uh, our uh, happiness, okay? So when, uh, in Peru was uh, something special. Uh, it was a very famous singer that went to, to, to have a concert, to give a concert to in Lima, Peru. And so when uh, it was difficult to get the, the tickets, so uh, one uh, person happy uh, showed the ticket and say, I am happy to have the ticket. So immediately that ticket was, Duplicate by thousands of entries. So many people was uh, full with this. Okay. So it's important uh, what is also our behavior and what the importance of the, the documents or the, the health uh, images that we, we have uh, are for us. So uh, the steganography is on medical images. Uh, it's very important also to support uh, with uh, vector machines and integrated wavelet transform. Uh, so it is used to, 
separate the region of interest from the non-region of interest in the medical image. So this uh, integral wave transforms is applied to embed the secret information within the, the non-region of interest. So a part of this uh, medical image uh, uh, could be covered, okay? So uh, it's possible to use a, a new method about a circular array that can be shared the secret key of the hands in the closeness of this uh, scheme. So uh, this is very important because uh, uh, we can use the, the peak signal noise ratio, okay, and test the robustness uh, using a structural signature, okay. Uh, also, we can uh, use uh, neural networks to detection of central serious uh, retinopathy, okay. Using this, this learning uh, through retinal uh, image, so uh, actually many people is suffering of this. Uh, we, we, with the time, we are losing vision, okay? We stay uh, close to the computer many hours in front of the, the monitor is also uh, losing the capability of, of, of protect our eyes. So, uh, it's important uh, capturing the light and generating electrical impulse for further processing in the brain. Okay, so uh, deep learning based central serious retinopathy, okay, uh, CSR, uh, it can be used to detecting and employing uh, pre imaging techniques, okay, the, the coherence uh, tomography, optical, and the fundus photograph. So uh, we can use, uh, compare different architecture models and working uh, and processing this. So uh, the, the, the OCT uh, images using, using the dense network um, with experimental results demonstrate that the, the, this model, okay, combined model, it could be effective okay, for the central serious remitopathy. So uh, is, is uh, also using these uh, neural networks that can we can solve these uh, problems with the eyes. So an uh, automated uh, diabetic retinopathy or severity grade and classification uses transfer learning and fine tuning it's also possible, okay? Uh, as we see, we can, uh, this uh, diabetes mellitus retinopathy, okay, is a disease that has become a health problem. And the early diagnosis is uh, very essential in the frames that wise uh, classification model. So it can be, we can use efficient, okay, uh, Efficient LD3, you know, as a TLN3, and the fine tuning, okay, that the uh, ResNet. And this is possible to use this to classify a disability of the disease level. So, uh, pre processing and uh, giving an augmentation process. It's possible also bring uh, a clear view of the futures of the raw fundus images. So with this segmentation uh, phase, it's involved in the, the constraints, okay? Uh, or the whole region within the, the chan phase algorithm. Uh, so with the, the training proposed, uh, 12 uh, features, were extracted, okay? And uh, also was fed in the, in the learning network. Okay, so continuing with this, uh, uh, combining this, this kind of neural networks. 
So as we see, we have uh, still too much to do, too much to process, too much to, to combine, and too, too much to do for, for the others. Also, we have, uh, we can use uh, neural, convolutional neural networks, okay, for the thyroid nodule uh, classification. And also, what is the, the, the common of this that, that we are seeing now in this, in this presentation is data augmentation. It is, it is a need of data. So we need to look, to find other ways to get more, more data. So uh, with more data, we can uh, be more precise precise, okay, we can be, have more, more accuracy in the results. So in this case, uh, we have a thyroid ultrasonography that is used for the detection and the classification of these uh, thyroid nodules. So uh, if we can optimize uh, this uh, convolutional neural network basis in the model, we can do, uh, about that in detection, the technique, okay. Uh, 295 public, uh, public and 654 collected thyroid ultrasonography uh, data set this view, okay. So uh, not always the, the data is uh, available. So we, we need to, hard, to work hard on this. Uh, the data sets are there. It's, the Kagan is not the unique uh, data set available. There are many data sets, but uh, really we can trust on, on, on that. That's the question. So uh, we have a model with dense, dense uh, neural network, okay, with AlexNet, with ResNet, and the Wizard ge Geometry Group. Well, uh, we can consider the segmentation and the boundary of detection of the, of the model to show the, the, the green region, okay. Can help to press, uh, have a, a result more precise. So uh, what are the potential challenges, okay? A research needs uh, investment. So what we can do to, we have data free, we have uh, problem free, we have uh, language program free, we have uh, algorithm models also free. That's what we, we need to create but we need also to, to experiment with this, uh, this new discovering uh, solutions. So uh, the codes. So uh, there are in, 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 in the real world, uh, hospitals, and persons, also it's not easy to work to, to find uh, integrate, okay? So there are many issues of integration, okay? So uh, maybe I think we are losing some, uh, the charity to help to each other, okay? Uh, sometimes we, we need uh, to remember that uh, we are in this, uh, in this world, uh, yes, we are passing. And so uh, give a hand to, to others that they need, it's, it's very important. So uh, another problem very, very, uh, that is very and grow is the data privacy and security, okay? 
none. Also, we have many problems of security. The other, other problem is the data exchange that uh, maybe is not possible to change. I have uh, many students that when they wanted to do uh, their, their projects, for example, for uh, one was uh, using uh, convolutional neural networks to detect the grade of the when a woman is uh, uh, hit with something, uh, the, the skin has uh, to turn purple. Uh, so uh, he was going to the to the to the hospital, to the police, to take pictures and say, "Please, could you let me to take a picture?" I was getting data. Okay, and uh, it was amazing because he could uh, process all the, the images. I could, uh, could uh, present a very good work. So uh, the ideas are here. So we need just to, to share our ideas and to do a, a very simple brainstorming and we can get everything. So what has changed in neural networks until today? Now, not too much has changed in 33 years. We are still sitting in different architectures with the layers of neurons and optimizing them end to end and also using a stochastic uh, gradient descent. So everything reads familiar, okay? But uh, one of the problems, uh, data set also has a good grow, okay? Uh, so uh, we can process great scales images and data sets typically contain, contain a few hundred millions and have resolutions, okay? Uh, but uh, it's not enough because these data sets are special, specific for some kind of problems. But uh, there are many problems that we can need to solve. And so uh, one initial uh, uh, research work could be to promote, uh, create a new data sets, okay? Data sets for students, uh, data sets for good students and data set for for students that need help to grow. Okay, we don't know what is happening in the mind of, of each one. Okay, so uh, data sets and models, they are somewhere around 10 million x larger. But data sets are too small. Okay, and models gains will come from the scaling up alone. So, uh, actually, also we need to tune the model, the models, and use augmentation. Uh, the uh, working with the loss function of the optimization and do innovations. So we need to reduce their rate, and so uh, we need also the models. Okay. Uh, working very, 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 very hard, very professional, okay? Um, what we need actually is uh, uh, computing. Need, we need computing to produce more. Big. What we can do about it? This is a good question that we, we need to solve. So uh, there are modest gains uh, with attainable Okay, and scaling the, the data sets. So uh, also the models also, uh, that I say they need more compute. Uh, we can train uh, also in the state of the art models in one minute. Okay, 
but uh, we have the, uh, actually with the amount of data is uh, will be enough it is the question so uh, the neural net this nighting a night net has approximately 9760 parameters okay uh, so uh, we need more patra parameters actually so this the state of the art uh, is a classifier uh, took three days to train a workstation okay uh, now it could be down in 90 seconds okay, with a, a small laptop. So, uh, but it's uh, very likely possible by switching to full batch optimization and utilizing uh, a GPU and maybe a TPU. Okay, uh, so uh, we have here many questions that we have to, to solve in the future. And I think uh, collaboration is a good start. Uh, I just want to say to say you, thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you and give me the opportunity also to motivate your students that uh, it's not the end. We can, we need continue working it, okay? We have everything open. Yes, no, do not waste our time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable keynote address. Discussing on the importance of using neural modeling in healthcare applications such as diabetic retinopathy, brain tumor detection, thyroid nodule classification, and many more using deep learning models. Also discussing about potential challenges in this area. What has changed in neural network until today? Thank you once again, sir, for your wonderful session. So, and a request from my side, sir, it will be greatly helpful to us if you share your presentation with this with Dr. Madhavi, because Many of us and our research scholars are working in this area, that is deep learning uh, with healthcare applications. So I request you to share your presentations. So uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you for you. Thank you, thank you also. So now, now I request our team. Sorry, trying to get out from here. Uh, yeah. Let me just a minute. Okay, thanks, fine. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your uh, wonderful Thank session. you, thank you very much for you. Because thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah. Healthcare applications related to deep learning models, so our research scholars, many of our colleagues, so it will be helpful to us so if you share your transmissions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So now I uh, request research and innovation to address Dr. Abhijay Srinivas Honorable Chancellor Mahal Babu Sar, Dr. Chancellor Vishnu Manjularu, Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Nagas Ramarosa, respected silver relate from Republic of Peru, respected Kirish Saradigaru Registrar, Dean of Amish Research, Dr. Gilbert Giraru, Dean Engineer Dr. P.M. Satish Laru, Adminus Dr. Ritimadali and Dr. Ramanita Laru. Uh, deans, head of the departments, professors, my dear young friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. Doing research and writing papers is one thing, but presenting papers in academic conferences is another, another thing altogether. 
I therefore confirm the participant to not only write research papers, but also to present them in academic conferences like this one. I can say the best example. How many of you are aware? Nagoya University. Till 2012 and 13, nobody knows about Nagoya University in this In 2014, all the developed countries look towards Nagoya University. What they are doing? What type of invention they are doing? So, Nagoya University professors in 2014, they have received Nobel Teaching Prize. Isabu and devotion. The reason is, in 1962, Dr. Nick Polnaya is the alumni of the United University, invented a red LED. That changed the whole communication system in this world. Now, intercontinental communication is through optical communication only. Without red LED, there is no optical communication. The same gentleman invented the LED, yellow LED. So the material which he is used is aluminum, gallium, arsenide, he is doped with the three junctions to emit red color. <coughs> he himself tried to invent blue LED. In 1971, Edward Miller and Panko invented blue LED. He has used magnesium is the material doped between the PA injections. That LED was not efficient and it was not giving bright color. Later in 1986, Herbert Marco invented blue LED, but that LED also it was not the illumination was not excellent. So this Hiroshi and Isamu, they have gone through this literature. They were attending different conferences. And meanwhile, the same professor, another Hiroshi Nakamura, Suji Nakamura, simple name, Suji. He was a professor in Nagoya University and he was migrated to California University. He was working there. And he was also attending international conferences. See, blue LED is invented with the illumination is the best, that they can make it as multiple color display system. Red, green, blue is required. Red, green already invented by Nikolai. So blue LED they were finding so that with the magnesium doping they did it, but that was not efficient, that was not giving a bright color. So Hiroshi, Isamu, and the third person, uh, uh, Hiroshi, Hiroshi Matamura, three together, in 1993, they have removed magnesium. They have used uh, gallium nitride, is the material local between the P injections and magnesium removed. Then the blue LED is very bright, reliable, and the wavelength also it is better than the green and yellow. So the brightness was increased by these three persons. So in 2014, so Nobel Physics Prize they have received. But the original inventor of LED, Nick Polnayak, did not receive any Nobel Prize or other scientists also. The reason is, if you go and attend international conferences and attend all the sessions, whichever the field you are interested, then Whatever the work they are doing, how they are doing, what type of software, what type of material they are using for the invention, he will come to know. If you simply work in your area, but what others are doing, you should know that. So I sincerely request if you attend international conference sessions, so you will find new inventions and new things and new softwares, and also you can interact with them, how they are doing, what they are doing, so that you can collaborate with that, that will help you a lot to invent new such tools, new designs. From this, uh, Siro from Peru, he explained that, you can see that the data, whatever he said, 
So diabetes can be understood easily. And also at the same time, what I understood from this data, if a thyroxine is injected into the bloodstream, it carries to the liver. The liver will convert thyroxine into the iodine. It absorbed as a bile or juice. So how much thyroxine is eliminated from the bloodstream, it can be calculated with the radioisotope active limit. So how the data is received? We have shown the different data banks, websites. So from that data, you can collect it, you can analyze it. So how much percentage of the thyroxine is eliminated from the bloodstream? So really this type of conference has we have a research article that we can present it, we can attend the different session. Definitely have the research that has to be done, you can understand. I'm very much thankful to this organizing committee of this conference for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your valuable uh, insights. I would like to request Dr. Ashok Heru, Associate Vice President, Industry and Inter International Relations to address the audience. Please, sir. Morning. I've just been told about the conference, a beautiful one, a very uh, appropriate one in a good area. I would just like to mention a few general thoughts, not so much about the conference, which all have I mean, spoken about, and our keynote speaker has done a wonderful presentation on that. In Mohan Babu University, a lot of things are happening. You are in the final year. You may not be here to reap the full benefits of what was happening, but you can definitely pass it on to the juniors, your friends, your relatives. Uh, I joined recently. Srinivas Lusser joined recently. He is handling research and innovation as a complete section. In most universities, okay, I graduated 40 years back, leave it. Even 10 years back, in most universities, leave the IISC and IITs, there was hardly any research as a component done by the faculty as well. But things are changing. In the Western world is IITs, is IISC, is a couple of institutes and universities were doing that. We are all focused on academics. At the same time, even most of the industries, big companies, were only looking at taking what was researched and then applying that to bring out their products. They weren't doing much research of their own, leave or few. Now that is fusing. Even they are doing for their own products. Leave pharmaceutical, that was a different area altogether. Think of our IT companies, Wipro, Infosys. I was in Wipro for 10 years. And Wipro was the only one which was slightly going on to that. Infosys later came with some ideas of their own on the product space. Otherwise, they're only services company. So that is changing. Now, what the message I have for all of you as you enter the workforce, you go and join a company. Don't focus on your regular job alone. Look beyond. <coughs> Look beyond your regular job. Broaden your perspective. Read a bit here and there. If possible, attend conferences. If you can go one step further, do some work and present it. But broaden your vision not only in a technological upskilling, as they call, but you can go on the side and look at different areas. If you have heard carefully, the chief guest today, the keynote speaker today, had a doctorate in physics, core physics, I forget that area, I wrote it down, uh, some particle accelerator and things like that, core physics, and look at where is he now. You can always have a look at different perspectives and whatever work you're doing is not limited to a particular domain. It's all multidisciplinary. It's like in the IT industry where I worked for some time, the first thing they teach during the induction, apart from the C, Java in those days, some used to be taught about banking because they work for the banking vertical and understand the banking processes. I was myself a trainer in the telecom industry, coming from my electronics background. 
you have to work for a telecom client in the US as software engineers. You also have to understand in those days what was 3G or what was optical communication, what are the sonnet uh, standards, SDA standards, things like that. So the message for you is from this conference, apart from whatever knowledge it delivers, is to broaden and take that as a thought back home and think about it. You have other resources on your hand, on your laptop, on your desktop. Browse in time and try to gather more information as you go along. All the best. Thank you to organizers. Thank you, sir, for your motivational speech. Now I request Dr. K. Reddy Madhavi, convener of the conference, to propose a word of thanks. It's my pleasure to express my vote of thanks to the management of the university for providing excellent infrastructure to conduct such an event with a magnanimous support. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed chief guest and keynote speaker, Professor and Dr. Sairi Rodriguez, Universal National Mayor B. San Marcos in MSM, Republic of Peru. Really, this presentation perfectly matched with the theme of the conference. Thank you, sir. Pedagogy guidance from Professor Nagaraj Ramro, Vice Chancellor, and Dr. K. Saravi, Mr. I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Ashok Theru, Associate Vice President Industry and International Relationships, and Dr. Avrain Sidi Vasu, Team Research and Innovation, for their research support. Ever cheerful and perennial support, uh, Dr. William Satish, to the Dean School of Engineering, for enlightening our spirit to great academic heights, encouraging us to conduct such a meritorious event. And my share thanks to Dr. B. Narendra Kumarra, Head of Computer Science and Engineering and Conference Chair, for his moral support throughout the event, in spite of his administrative efforts. I express my sincere thanks to the publication team Springer, we are associated with for uh, publishing our proceedings. The publication team, Dr. Suchen, Dr. Vinit, and Dr. Amit, and Dr. Subhanagan for their support. I give my sincere thanks to the team members and my colleagues of ICIHF CNN 2022, the professors from CSC, Dr. Amy Prihasha, Dr. G. Sumita, and Dr. J. Avanija, and Dr. Suresh Kallam and Ganesh for their continuous support and all the delegates from various states and countries. Uh, to mention here, we received papers from 12 interna uh, international wide and uh, 10 are from a host institution. Out of them, uh, seven are from the, the five years of uh, states. It's very uh, great thing to inform you. And our energetic young students who made this event a memorable one, Thank you, Tim and all. And as specified by our honorable VC, sir, I request all the PhD scholars to make sure that they'll attend uh, physically for such an event in future that we are organizing, going to organize in MPU. Those who are online today, I request them and we ensure that they'll attend physically. Thank you, one and all, for your support. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all. We would also Thank uh, our partner university in Taiwan, uh, Asia University. Uh, in that one, I'll just take two minutes more. Yes. As part of my role here, I take care of industry and international relations. We have already signed agreements with three universities. One of them is a noted one in the in Taiwan, uh, Asia University, globally ranked in the 350 bracket, 350 to 400 bracket. To get a perspective, our best IIC is in the 250 and bracket. So it's somewhere close to that. Uh, now, we will be from next year, Asia University is one, Krakow, Poland is one, uh, Romania, Vitesse in Romania is one, and the fourth one is almost signed. It is a real top institute in the US. It's the University of Mad Wisconsin at Madison. It's number 81 in the world. Now, what we're trying to do, we may also give it a talk. We're trying to encourage our students to go and study for one semester or a summer session of only one month with a credit transfer arrangement. And if some of you want to even do your master's, you can approach me through our career 
things will be easier. Like you may not ask for a TOEFL or a IELTS or a GRE, things like that. Uh, I can always assist you on that. Ask the word on your classmates. Thank you. Thank you all for gracing us with your uh, presence at the inaugural ceremony of ICIFC NN 2022. Thank you all. Now I request all dignitaries and the participant audience to join for that. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you.